Charles V's Clocks by John Quincy Adams. Read for LibriVox.org. Charles V's Clocks. With Charles V art thou acquainted, reader, of Ferdinand and Isabel the grandson, in ages past of Europe's realm's file leader, amongst the mightiest of all ages one. Spain, Germany, his scepter swayed, with feet victorious over France he trod, Africa and Italy his laws obeyed, and either India trembled at his nod. Well, reader, this same monarch mighty, like many of his stamp before, down to the latest of the set, whose names I leave in blank as yet, and with Napoleon you may fill, or Alexander as you will charles seated upon all his thrones with all his crowns upon his head built piles on piles of human bones as if he meant to reign the sovereign of the dead he kept the world in uproar forty years and waded bloody oceans through feasted on widows and on orphans tears and cities sacked and millions slew and all the pranks of conquering heroes played a master workman at the royal trade the recipe approved time out of mind to win the hearts of all mankind but heroes too get weary of their trade charles had a conscience and grew old the gout sometimes an ugly visit paid a voice within unwelcome stories told that heroes just like common men one day must die and then of what might happen charles was sore afraid of charles wars need little here be said their causes were ambition avarice pride despotic empire o'er the world to spread revenge on francis who proclaimed he lied and chiefly luther's heresies to quell to prove the wrong of reformation with fire and sword and desolation and save the souls of protestants from hell but when the humor came to save his own charles stripped off all his royal robes dismissed his double globes cast down his crowns descended from his throne and with saint jerome's monks retired to die alone charles had a maggot in the brain restless that needs must be of something thinking and now to keep his spirits from sinking employment often at a loss to find much of his time he spent in prayer in penance for his evil deeds in saying masses and in telling beads in self-chastisement till he bled a drop for every ton of others shed and much his little garden claimed his care in planting cabbages and plucking seeds but these were simple occupations and charles so long in empire's toils immersed so deep in all their intricacies versed some pastime needed full of complications so long his study had been man his sport his victim man of flesh and blood that now with art mechanic he began to fashion mannequins of wood soon he became a skilful mechanician and made his mimic men with so much art they made st jerome's friars start and think the royal master a magician leagued with the mother of all evil like dr faustus so bound to the devil at last the fancy seized his brain of perfect instruments for keeping time watches and clocks he made but all in vain he never could succeed to make them chime with choice chronometers he'd line his cell no two at once would ever ring the bell now mark the moral of my tale which flashed in sunbeams upon charles's soul when he whose chisel could prevail man's outward actions to control so that his puppets seemed as good as living men though made of wood yet ever baffled found his skill to mould two watches to his will he smote his bosom with a sigh exclaiming what a dolt was i by force constraining men to think alike and cannot make two clocks together strike End of poem.
This recording is in the public domain.